This tiny thing is the Offero Laser One by Orcher, and I just wanted to throw this out here at the start of the review. Uh, Orcher did provide this to me free of charge, but they did not pay for a review, nor did they pay for any advertising. All of the thoughts in this review are 100% completely my own which may be hard to believe because i'm in love with this thing and we'll get into why in just a second the first of a new line of lasers from orter the offero laser one was designed to be compact easy to use and feature rich its simple design and clean aesthetics keep the machine approachable to brand new laser owners and its small size means it's portable and easy to manage even in a home environment at just $229.99, even compared to some of the least expensive comparable machines on the market, this device is an absolute steal. They can often be found for even less. At the time of recording, it had just been on sale for under $175 from Mortar's website. Don't let its small size and low price tag fool you, though. The Alfaro Laser 1 is a capable machine that comes with a good chunk of the bells and whistles you expect from a modern diode laser marking system. You get all the things you would expect out of the box, including a decent pair of safety glasses, a few testing materials, a focus gauge, and the very few parts you'll need to get this thing set up and marking. The Alfero Laser 1 comes out of the box very nearly assembled. All you have to do is pull the laser module out of the box and attach it to the rail. Snap the data and power cable connectors and screw the ground wire into place and you're done. If you really try, you can have this thing ready to go in under a minute. Once you plug in the power cord and the USB cable, you're ready to get after it. The Alfero Laser 1 is plug and play, so you won't need any drivers to operate this unless you're on a super old OS like Windows 7 or Windows XP. The AL1 sports the same 9th generation 32-bit motherboard and 240 MHz ESP32 microcontroller found in the other modern Orter offerings, so you're going to have perfect compatibility with the free Laser Gerbil software on PC or Lightburn on PC, Mac OS, and Linux. It goes without saying, we recommend Lightburn for the best results. Since the AL1 shares a motherboard with its bigger siblings, you get the same safety protections that you'd enjoy with those other high-end machines as well. This includes a few different features, and they're all really cool. First, we have the active position protection, where the machine detects the laser module has deviated from the expected course and will shut down the laser. Next, the exposure duration detection, where if the laser module stops moving, it will shut down the laser to prevent it from burning a hole in your material. Another one is what they call the laser beam safety guard, which is more accurately described as a USB disconnect safety, as that's its function. In the event of the USB disconnecting, the laser stops receiving signals from the controller device and it will shut down the laser, which is super nice to have. Finally, use of the ninth generation motherboard means that you'll have your choice of the three new next generation laser modules. First, let me just say these modules are badass. They're all cutting edge and each has its own primary function that makes each module excel at specific tasks. Your first option is the LU2-2, which is going to be your detail and precision module. It's unique due to its smaller luminous cavity, so it's capable of significantly smaller dot sizes than the other two modules. With a spot size of approximately 0.07 millimeters by 0.06 millimeters, this module is going to be perfect for photo work and other high detail projects. The trade-off here is that you're only working with 1 to 1.6 watts of optical power, so it's going to struggle with some of the tougher materials like stone and thicker coatings and paints. I don't have one of these yet, but I want one now after seeing what they can do. Unfortunately, they don't seem to be on sale on Orter's website, which is where I prefer to get my Orter gear. I can't seem to find them on Amazon at the moment either, which is a huge bummer. If they come back in stock somewhere, I'll add links down in the video description where you can pick one up. Your second option is the LU2-4 Short Focus, or SF for short, which is your general engraving module. This is the one I started with, and it's the best all-around everyday performer. Spot size here is around 0.12 millimeters by 0.15 millimeters, so this spot is almost twice as big as the 2-2. 
That said, this is still an impressively small dot size, and I've certainly done impressive looking photo work with it. This module also cranks out 4.5 to 5.5 watts of power, so it's going to tackle those harder or more laser resistant materials with a lot more ease than the 2-2, which is why this module is the one I'd recommend for most beginners. Third is the LU 2-4 Long Focus, or LF for short, and it does what it sounds like it does. It's got a much deeper depth of field, which makes it ideal for cutting applications. While diode lasers aren't the best at cutting things to begin with, I have to say this makes for a marked improvement over the SF when it comes to cutting. This module has a 0.17mm by 0.25mm dot size, so again, nearing twice that of the SF module, which means you're losing a lot of the benefit of using the diode as far as spot size goes when compared to something like a CO2 laser. Still, that's not what this module is really designed for. It pumps out the same 4.5 to 5.5 watts of power with a longer throw, which makes it much easier to get through material while cutting, and that's where this module is going to shine. This is also the only module that has additional air assist functionality, which provides a massive amount of value by reducing flare-ups and keeping soot and smoke off the lens. Make sure you put them somewhere safe where you aren't going to lose them. I've been unable to find replacement parts for the air assist separately from the module package. It also does not come with an air pump, so make sure you pick one up if you plan to utilize this functionality. I have an inexpensive one that works well in the description. I'd also like to note, if you choose to pick up one of these, to unlock the little grub screw on the back before trying to wrench the LF nozzle cover off. I couldn't be bothered to read the instructions, so mine is ugly now because I'm a brutish animal and went after it with a pair of pliers. If you decide to pick up the AL1, no matter which module you pick, please be aware the acrylic shields that come with each of the different modules only offer mild protection from the beam, and according to Urcher's own website, they are not a replacement for safety glasses and will not prevent damage to your eyes from extended beam exposure. With the actual laser modules out of the way, let's take a look at the machine hardware. As I mentioned earlier, the AL1 comes almost completely assembled. It features a solid aluminum rail system with rubber belts and two NEMA 17 stepper motors that drive the gantry system. At nearly every point along their lengths, all of the cabling is jacketed with protective material and does a great job keeping itself out of the way without fiddling so you won't have to worry about scorching your wiring with this system at all. The frame pieces for this system are solid plastic and aren't 3D printed, so they have a nice premium feel, and when the laser is running they glow blue, which has nothing to do with the function of the machine, but it's pretty damn cool. One of my favorite things about this tiny thing is it actually has a functional limit switch system, a claim its big brother, the off Ferro Laser 2, can't make as of this recording. You'll be hard pressed to find another system at this size and price point that boasts limit switches, and honestly, I'm so happy they're here. I'm so accustomed to limit switches that their absence is usually a deal breaker for me when I'm shopping for myself. It's just one of those conveniences you don't notice till it's not available and it makes using this machine so much easier. On the front panel we'll find the 24 volt power supply port as well as the USB and interface port for Urtur's proprietary offline controller. We'll also find the power and reset buttons here. All the ports make good contact and connections feel snug. The buttons are super clicky and fun to press. All around, everything feels super solid. In the world of diode lasers, you'll see max speeds range from 2000 millimeters per minute to 10,000 millimeters per minute. The AL1 has a max speed of 5000, which puts it right at the center of the pack. And frankly, there's not much you need speeds faster than this for, considering the power output of the diode laser modules. I'm having trouble coming up with a reason why you would want the 10,000 millimeters per minute offered by the larger professional oriented LaserMaster 2 Pro. We also can't talk about the AL1 without mentioning its work area. At 180 by 180 millimeters, this thing is tiny. Of course, for larger items, thanks to its cantilever design, it's pretty easy to slide larger items into the work area. It's also so light and maneuverable that you can always simply set the entire system on top of your workpiece. So there are definitely ways you can work around some of the AL1 size restrictions. It's not all bad news. Since it's so compact, the thing is a breeze to pack up and take with you literally just about anywhere. This would be the perfect little demo diode for trade shows, craft fairs, and just about anywhere else you'd want to bring the machine. So it looks impressive on paper, but how does it actually do in the shop? In short, the thing is a beast. I threw everything I could think of at it, and it handled almost all of it like a champ. We tested the Alfaro Laser 1 on a massive range of items. 
All of the standard materials, such as pine, bamboo, and leather, all performed exactly as expected. We had pretty solid success with coated and painted metals as well. The laser was easy to use, and even blindly guessing on a live stream as we tested the unit yielded amazing results without any planning or practice in advance. Any defects we noticed in the markings could have easily been solved with a tweak in the settings, especially DPI. The dot size of these diodes is so small we found ourselves constantly surprised at just how high we had to set the resolution to close the gaps in the marked areas. Of course, where diodes really shine is raster performance. These lasers are capable of resolutions double or triple that of the CO2 lasers in some cases, and it shows here. If you're looking to do small form factor raster work like photographs, look no further. Even with the LU2-4 modules, this thing is a raster beast, and there's honestly not much more to say about it. I had heard rumors that you could even get an anneal type effect from these diodes on ferrous metals like stainless steel. We wanted to see for ourselves, so we gave it a shot, and it does indeed work. No amount of scratching or scrubbing removed the marks we were able to make, and they have some pretty stellar contrast. Color me impressed. Cutting performance was equally impressive. We cut through a variety of materials, including multiple hardwoods and Romark engraving acrylic with ease. The machine was rated for 3mm thick materials, and we found this to be true. Our testing on 5mm ply definitely ended in failure, but I'm not disappointed given it's well outside the Orter's stated thickness rating for this unit. The Ortur YRR 2.0 doesn't come in the box with the AL1, so I won't be factoring it into my final score, but it is in fact compatible, so I wanted to touch on how they work together in case this is something you wanted to pursue. Unlike the AL1, this thing comes in a thousand tiny pieces and has to be put together from scratch. It took me about 30 minutes to complete, and I was only mildly frustrated by the time I had it conquered. The materials it's made from are all high quality, decent screws, real metal frame, only a couple of laser cut acrylic spacers. My main complaints originate with the overall design of the thing. I don't love it. The biggest issue is that in order to change the spacing of the rollers or guide wheels, you have to get a wrench and a screwdriver and loosen multiple nuts in multiple places multiple times. Annoying for sure, but that's a subject for a different video. Let's see how well it works. After a little trial and error, we were able to get decent results with the rotary on this powder-coated tumbler. I think with some more practice, we could easily clean up these results. This isn't going to come close to being a replacement for something like a CO2 laser for heavy tumbler work, but if a diode is all you can afford right now, the solution is fair if not elegant and gets a pass. So here's the deal. This is a badass little diode laser. Pretty flawless execution here by Auteur, and I think I'd recommend this laser to literally everyone. Its small form factor and advanced safety features, along with the fact that it comes almost completely assembled, make this an absolute no-brainer for people looking to get into lasers. The price tag of $229.99 USD makes this unit all the more mouthwatering, and access to the complete lineup of second-generation laser modules from Orteur make this attractive even to seasoned laser veterans. Even the newer, larger Offero Laser 2 doesn't feature limit switches, and compared to the larger LaserMaster 2 Pro, you lose mostly a bit of unnecessary speed, some work area, and your emergency stop button. But if its size is of the essence to you, you'll have a hard time passing this model up. Its long list of quality of life enhancements like limit switches and modular laser diodes make it clear the Offero Laser 1 accomplishes what it set out to do despite its inherent size limitations, earning it a solid 5 stars from me, especially for the beginner crowd. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Uh, I, I really think that this is a great laser to add to your lineup. If you have any desire at all to do photos on organics like wood or leather or uh, you know even Romark engraving plastic things like that this is the laser that you want to get uh, the Orter laser diode modules are just so good at doing photos the spot size is so much smaller than co2 I really think it's an indispensable addition to whatever you've got going on in your laser shop so don't overlook them even if you have more expensive lasers if you guys got value out of this video please smash the like button let everybody else know the content is good and uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time I upload a video
If you really love the content here over at Laser Everything and you want to support the channel so we can keep doing what we're doing, please go check out the Laser Master Academy. It's masters.lasereverything.net and it's the number one way to help support the channel so that we can keep doing what we do. You get a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up like access to our laser parameter libraries, you get bonus episodes of the podcast and exclusive live streams and a whole lot more. Special shout out to our supporters that made this episode possible and as always guys we will see you in the next one. Thank you.